think I had too much coffee. Bam, we're live. I ate an old, uh, I, I just finished my fast, 36 hour fast. I ate an old hamburger that was in the fridge, minus the bun. I just pulled the meat out. Oh shit, there he is. On time, clean shaven. Oh boy, this is going to be good. I love Justin. Hopefully, fun and funny. There will be no fun. <laughs> no fun will be had. I'm all buzzing. I hope this will be a good one. Imagine both Ellie and Justin come to the show and speak up about their relationship. Or even better, her photo bombing and walking out of the shower. Holy shit, you pervert. <laughs> I hope Justin talks some shit to Sevon. We need to see a spicy side. How about you eat a dick, Austin? I got you, Austin. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dude, you did it again. I did. I did. It was crazy. We, I was I was watching. Say it again. I said we did. I got a my, my team. Adam, Jesse, Ellie. Ellie. <laughs> hey, um, so um there were there were a variety of accusations that I've made about you, opinions. Yep. Said you look like a baboon. I said you were raised in the ghetto. I said Ellie was your girlfriend. I said you beat Matt Fraser up in a fight. I said, you're going to Wadapalooza on a team. And I said, you look thick in the core, which is code for Chablito. <laughs> um, and I'm looping it in because you didn't say no, that I'm more likely to lose than Ellie is to win. So that's wait, wait, I'm your. Oh, wow. Oh, you've come to defend the honor. of Wow. Did I say that? <laughs> Dude, I don't know if that's more of a dig to me or her, but. <laughs> <laughs> I killed two birds with one stone. Yep. Yep. You did. <laughs> hey, so your dad invited me. Uh, I was in LA, but your dad invited me to some party at your house. Was I going to get jumped there? Were, were the Diaz brothers going to be there and I was going to get jumped? <laughs> Damn right. <laughs> like, like you need the Diaz brothers to beat me up. Hey, you, you don't mess with people in the 209, you know? Uh, so, um, T tell me, tell me, I'm starting to think that the Ellie thing was a not her come to train there, but a you wanted to hold her hand. <laughs> That's exactly what it was, Devon. That's awesome. Whose idea? So you guys were just like courting and you're like, hey, come out. And you guys were just saw each other at a comp or something. And then the courtship started. And then you said, hey, come out and visit and let's see if we're, if we're compatible. Uh, honestly, not really. Um, after last year's games, I really wanted to have a training partner and just kind of like kept eyes and ears open to kind of see if anybody was like kind of willing to, if I thought if anybody was like a good pick, um, but nothing to push. I mean, obviously I was able to win the games last year training by myself. So like I knew what we were doing was like working, but it's pretty rough to go through training by yourself. And I knew I couldn't train with a guy. So just kind of trying to like see what would happen. And then Ellie wanted to come out and train. Like I met, I met her at last year's games super briefly at like Great Dane CrossFit, just kind of like said hi, bye, but never really thought a thing of it. I mean, she's from Australia. So I was like, didn't even think about, she could be possibly be a training partner. And Daniel told me that she was looking to maybe come to the States. Uh, to get who's, who's Daniel? Uh, Daniel Robbins. Okay. Um, he, um, but yeah, just uh, she was looking to come to the States. And after Wadapalooza, um, they started working together, Ellie and Daniel. And uh, he's a coach. What's he do? What's that dude do? Uh, agent. Agent. Okay. Okay. Yeah. And then just uh, she wanted to like come train. And that's all it was like come train for a week, see if she can learn something, you know? And then she ended up really liking it and kind of try to figure out if she wanted to stay longer. And then one, a one week trip kind of turned into like three months. But you guys hold hands now. There's, there's, you guys are more than training partners, right? Yes. We are more than training partners. Wow. And, and, and um, do you guys have to have a talk? For sure. I mean, I think, I think it was something that I was actively trying to prevent, you know, like you were, I, you were for sure. Like it's you had your wall up. Don't look at her like, um, like, a um, an object of desire. Don't see her as a flower. 
She's just yeah. another fucking she, piece she of is, here lifting weights. She is like by far like the best training partner like I've ever had. And like I was having so much fun with training. I felt like I was getting a lot more out of my training. And I know that like if I ever went down that road, like you kind of can't go back, you know, like can be like, oh, no, like let's try it and see if it works. And it doesn't work. It's like, oh, OK, well, like now let's just go back to being just training partners. So I knew that probably wasn't like. It's just like a, a road that I didn't want to kind of go down, but it kind of got to a point where it was harder to like, like fight it, you know, and it was kind of like just more irritating, more stress or whatever it was. And like, I know I train better when I'm happy. So it was kind of like, it kind of like just naturally came on, I guess, after that, when I kind of like does, let the guard down. <laughs> doesn't, it, isn't it, couldn't it, it's got to be weird because... Um, like I, I, I worked with my wife for five years at the same job and kind of even, it's not even once you kind of, it's so delicate, right? Because once you kind of make it known, like you have to like really go into the water slowly, right? You got to be like accidentally bumper as you're going to the bathroom and test that out. Well, how did that go? <laughs> right. I mean, it's like, like, as you pat, no, I mean, I think it's got to be so gentle, right? The courtship has to be yeah, delicate. And, like, I, th I think she also came from training by herself, mostly, you know. She's out in Australia. She's getting remote programming at the time. So she kind of knew what it was like to, like, go through all that, like, on your own. And But we also know what it takes to, like, do it on your own. And, like, we're both individual athletes. And, like, I've made my priorities, like, very clear of, like, what I want to do. And, and, like, as CrossFit being my number one priority and – every decision like I make during the cross game season is to win again, you know? And like, and same thing, like, same goes for her to get like, for her to get the best out of her season that she can every year. But I think that we can help each other so much more to do that. And like, we understand like how it is to go through it, you know? What do you do? Um, is it just the, the uh, what do you do to, to test the waters? Like one day just after training, you're like, Hey, are you hungry? And then you see if that eating a hamburger is actually you turn it into an hour instead of 30 minutes and you're like, OK, we enjoy each other's company. Like, how do you well, how do you like test the what? Because if you can't right? my thought is, is like if I would have told my like I work so closely with my wife, if I would have told I don't want to make it like her feel bad if she's not interested. Right. It still took me fucking five yeah. years. But um, <laughs> uh, who pulls whose? Great question. Who pulls whose hair? If a fabulous question. We'll, we'll work our way up to getting that answered. Um, how how do you make how do you make the first uh, gesture? Well, I mean, I don't know about the first gesture or anything like that, but I I lived in um, Vancouver with two of like my best friends, Son and Megan. That Vancouver, Washington. Yes. Okay. Yeah, lived there with them trying to save money, you know, like didn't want to get my own place or anything like that. And then Ellie came into town and they opened that they, they have an awesome house. And they said, like, oh, yeah, she can stay here like while she's here for a week. And then it turned into three months and they still let her stay. So, like, we spent 24 seven with each other because she didn't have a car. And then she was staying at the same place that, that I was. And we went to the gym all day together. So, like, we're around each other a lot. So, like, you kind of just like. We just felt all felt super comfortable around each other, and then it kind of just like organically happened. I don't know if there was a first gesture or anything like that, but three months. Have you ever dated a? Have you ever dated a girl who does CrossFit? No, I mean, yeah, I mean, I've had girlfriends try it in the past, but no. And um, is is it? Do you like the, that connection? Yeah, I mean, I, it's something that I've always wanted, like, to kind of share. I, I didn't think that I would date someone that, like, I didn't have any desire to date someone that was trying to compete at the level that I was. I thought that there's a lot of room for disaster there, you know? Like, what if you go to the games and one person has a really good games weekend and the other person doesn't? Like, how's that going to affect? And that was something that we were super conscious with, like, during this year's games, you know? And, yeah, it was definitely not a problem. There's a lot of things that I think – I was worried about for really no reason, you know, um, you're, you're a bit of, and, and I'm open to being wrong, but you're a bit of a country bumpkin. Didn't yeah. go to the mall. The first time you ever went to the mall was when you were 12. Your mom said, um, is, is where is she from in Australia? Is she from, is she country girl too? 
Uh, yeah, she's from South Australia. She, I mean, she, she like grew up um, like away from the city and stuff like that. So, and she grew up with three brothers. So, ah, that's awesome. Yeah. She, 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 she can take it, <laughs> which is awesome. <laughs> uh, when she, when you're at the games and she does well, do you experience the highs and then vice versa? When you're at the games and she doesn't do well, did you ex- do you experience the lows or do you have to have some sort of wall? Yeah, um, honestly, we we stayed like pretty separate, you know. I mean, obviously, there's times where I got I caught a couple of glimpses of like, like her events and stuff. And at the end of the day, we do like event debriefs, like day debriefs of how the day went and um, kind of given the highlights. But uh, after we definitely went back and like watched all the events. But the main purpose was like, hey, I don't want to like ride her lows, and I don't want her to ride my lows either, you know. So right, really, we were both. And it, it's not something that we had to, like, fight or anything like that. Adam and Jesse kind of, like, had that all under control. Um, she She's a bit of a uh, freak of nature. I mean, the, the sky's the limit for her, right? Yeah. Dude, she has, like, like there's no doubt in my mind she was going to go to the games and, like, win events. Really? Even out of Australia? I mean, fuck, dude, that semifinal was stat- it's so hard. Dude, th- there was no doubt that she was capable of it, and I just don't think she, like – realizes that she's like that capable you know like she was so timid on all the events during Torian, you know that she was like scared of like or did she like did she was scared of like not trusting her fitness you know because she's gotten so much fitter in the past three or four months so i think it's uh going to the games and getting an event win for her is just like a huge confidence boost yeah it, it, i mean it's not, it's not anything that like is surprising to like me or adam or jesse or anything like that because I mean, I, I'm relatively new, but I've done CrossFit for a long time. And, like, there are some workouts that we do where I just can't touch her, you know? The, uh, I mean, obviously, the one where she was doing the dumbbell snatches was nuts. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely nuts. Everyone was but like, they, you couldn't even, like, spot. fathom what you're seeing. Say it again. It is insane, man. The, her wall ball speed, like, her, like, squat. Like, I think we did, like, there was, like, a a test of, like, if you can do 60 jumping air squats with a barbell, so I guess it's not air squats, uh, just a, like an empty barbell in 60 seconds, like that's like pretty insane, you know? Like you have a pretty good cycle rate, and she got 67. Yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It's and, a- she, and she runs great too. She doesn't look like she's made to run, and she's an insane runner. She grew up running, like doing like long distance running with her dad and stuff. Like it's a, uh, yeah, dude, she, she's a freak of nature. She's just, I think she just missed a lot of like the skill portion of CrossFit. Like she can, she can do all the grunt work and push hard. So now it's just kind of like dialing all in. I mean, last year, I know she hates talking about it, but like she, at the handstand event last year, she stood and stared at the handstand obstacle. Like it never made it over the first one, like at last year's games. And then coming into this year, she gets top 20 in the handstand walk event. Like, that's a huge improvement, you know? Crazy, like, crazy. Things, like, there's so many things like that where this year's games was, like, a huge improvement from last year, even though it didn't, like, show it as much as she wanted to on the leaderboard. Justin, let's say your um, imaginary situation, you're working out, she's working out in the gym, and then you you go, you're done, do, you know, you're doing it on separate training. You you go sit down, you're drinking your protein or you're checking your phone or something or switching your shoes. And you see something that she's doing from the corner of your eye. Will you yell at her? Will you be like, hey, get the fuck up on the bar. What are you doing? Or would, Oh, you, yeah. Yeah. You get, you, yeah. Sure. Awesome. Yeah. God, I love it. So you do pay, t- you guys do give each other energy in training. 100%. I think it's like a, a big push. And like a lot of things is, is that some of my strengths are her weaknesses and then vice versa, you know? So, like, if I can, like, keep up with her in, like, certain workouts, like, I know that I'm, like, finally at par, like, with, like, some of my machine work or some of my barbell cycling, you know, because, like, she's on a next level on those things. And then, yeah, we, we play so many games in training. Like, we, we, like, before we do a workout, we have to, we guess our own time for the workout. And then whoever's farthest off, like, has a punishment, you know? Oh, so, that's dope. And, and, and we're all super competitive. So it's not like you're going to be like, oh, I'm going to finish early. So I'm just going to slow down at the end. Like, that just doesn't happen, you know? So it's like, she, she's always like, yeah, like, I pick the workout. Like, yeah, I'll finish it in, like, 822. Like, that's my guess. And then she picks... 12 minutes and then she finishes it in 7:45. like she's just so like she gets punished for doing good yeah pretty much she's learning it helps her kind of like 
figure out like what she's actually capable of, think about the workouts, but it's definitely a fun game. Um, who's the guy? Um, there was a picture and there's a guy that I don't recognize and it says team. Is that, um, is that Daniel Robbins? Probably. It's you, it's you and Adam and her, the four of you there. And Oh, that, okay. Jesse, who's that, that guy? That's Jesse. So we, um, brought him onto the team in, it was right after the 2020 games because my strict press sucked. And he uh, owns a gym called Squamish Barbell in Squamish, Canada, which is like an hour north of Vancouver, Canada. And yeah, he's been on the team ever since then. We do three two-hour sessions a week. He FaceTimes in with me the whole time and is there like 24-7 for like all those events. And he's just like, been a huge crucial part of the team and ever since then he's just like like it, him and adam are kind of like the lead like people and it's like he, he it's been next level kind of having him on the team and ellie's actually she has to leave the states by the first and so she's going to canada because she has to go anywhere but the states because her visa is expiring so she's going to go up to canada with him for a while and tell her she's applying for a three-year visa so hopefully that gets approved in like a month or so does that freak you out a little bit that she's going to go up there and something's going to happen? She can't come back. No, I, I mean, I, there's, I feel like the state, like there's so many people here. Like I think she's going to get back in. No problem. I think it may, maybe it gets delayed a little bit, but she, I think it won't be a problem. She's super worried about it. Uh, the champ class act right here, $10 to support the continuation of the mullet. Um, Jeremy, um, are you um? Did you show up different this year to the games? Did you show up bigger and thicker? Yeah, I mean, I, I definitely think so. I mean, I think um, like my upper body, like pressing is, and stuff, is something that I've like struggled with in the past, and that's something that we have definitely put a lot of work into. And I think, yeah, I think I, I was definitely a little bit bigger than last year. I definitely have made a big jump from twenty 2020 twenty to to twenty twenty one, and then still like a. A good size one, I think, from last year to this year, like was. My, is it a weight difference uh, or body composition difference? Um, a little bit of both. I think I, I was I was heavier this year than I was last year, not like super significantly, but like a couple pounds. Um, when we had talked about how Hiller did that, um, uh, natty or not on you, right? Yeah, and and. I, I, I guess I didn't think about it at the time, but it was inevitable that I feel like now the reason why he did that was to test the waters. I should actually ask him to see how the community would react. Right. And he'd do a safe one first. When he did the one on Tia, did you have an opinion on that? Did you, did you hear about that? He basically accused, Tia, he said that he, I, I don't know if accused Tia, but he said that he thinks Tia is on drugs. Does that piss you off a little bit that he did that? Yeah, I mean, I, I think if, if if anybody knows anything, like, yeah, for sure come forward if you know. But, like, making accusations, accusations towards, like, something that you don't know for a fact, you know, I think it's uh, definitely pretty hard, especially with, like, a lot of girls in CrossFit. I think they get it a little bit harder than guys, you know, because, like, like I'm by no means, like a, like, a physical specimen, you know? Like, you walk into a Globo gym and there's 10 guys that are, like, look more fit than me you know but yeah. like, girls in crossfit that's that's not the case you know and i think a lot of people can't wrap their heads around what like hard work does to like anybody who wants to put the effort in so like right. about some of the girls i think is a it's a little tough position um as i and that's kind of like how ellie said she felt about it too but it's like it's definitely hard because like she gets it way worse than I do. I mean, I'm, I'm by no means, like like I said, a physical specimen. I don't think I have too many people that accuse me of <laughs> taking steroids. It, it's, it's, yeah, it is. Um, it, it, it frustrates me too. Here's the reason why. She makes a living doing that. Mm -hmm. She makes a living doing it, right? Um, and since there is no proof, since you don't see a needle dangling out of her, since you don't yeah. see, I mean, he, he's going off of speculation on her muscle growth. It's just, it's hard for me to, uh, it just seems too, too much, too yeah, heavy. I, like I, I need to I, really, I need to see real proof. I need to be like, Hey, I, sh I did drugs with her before yeah. I accuse her publicly. Yeah. And, and I watched that video too. And like, I wrestled for a long time, you know, and like, I worked really, really hard, but like 
my nutrition was garbage. I just wasn't eating and pushing myself to the limits just so I could stay light, you know? And then after wrestling, I kind of like dialed in like my nutrition and I put on 15 pounds like quick, you know, just by like better nutrition and training better. I remember making, I put on another like 10 pounds, like after working with Jesse, you know, like it took like almost two years, but like I've done it, you know? And it's like, dang, like I I know what like a diet change can do to someone if they're super far off, you know? Like you can right. do a diet change and make a pretty crazy like appearance, you know, like on right. how you come off. So, and, and we'll see, but yeah. Justin, looking forward to watching you have a long successful c- career give, and give Sevon crap for not knowing what you, that you work with a strength coach, which is why you killed the sandbag ladder. We'll get to that one second. Um, he didn't accuse her. Oh. <laughs> um, uh, so, after you did the, your lifts on the sandbag were crazy consistent, at least from, from the layman's eye that I have, like obvious that you had a protocol of what to do and you followed it every time and you killed it. Like your, every lift looked exactly the same. Right. Um, and, uh, then later on, someone sent me a video, I think from your Instagram from a couple of years ago, where it shows you training with, um, stones. Mm-hmm. It, did you h- how are you so proficient in the bag i'm guessing you did train you had trained that no oh hey sorry michael eat a dick here we go <laughs> you you had not you had not trained those no i mean i've done i did like the the stones in high school uh-huh i did that and then i went up and trained with uh my coach jesse in canada and we touched on him again um we weren't sure what we were gonna see and like We've but done, never bags, but never bags. No, we've done heavy sandbag stuff, but always carries, you know? And like, like, and obviously I'm, I'm doing it long ways if I'm doing carries, you know, and stuff like that. But uh, I don't think anybody in the field touched over a 250 pound sandbag before. Like gyms just don't have those, you know? Like, Why did you do it hot dog ways instead of the way everyone else was doing it? Like the way Danny Spiegel was doing it and, and do it like vertical and, and pop it up. Yeah, I mean, lo- looking back at that event, I'm really curious what would have happened if I did it the other way. I mean, with my wrestling background, I think I still could have handled the sandbag pretty well um, doing it the long way. But I honestly just Googled it. <laughs> I Googled- oh, really? Like while you were in the back? Uh, we actually had probably about like two hours before we had to go w- once they announced it. So I just YouTubed a bunch of stuff. And most of the people that were lifting it heavy did it that way. So then we went in the back, like, obviously, we're still going to try it, you know, and I think everyone kind of had the same idea, like, hey, we're just going to test it out. And there was a 260 pound bag and a 300 pound bag. And like, everyone was like, pretty struggling with the 260. And like, don't get me wrong, I was too, like, it felt heavy. And like, I think a lot of people are pretty nervous about that event. And there was a 300 pound bag that I saw a bunch of people fail. And I was like, you know what, like, F it, I'm just gonna give it a shot. And I got it doing it that way. And I saw so many people fail and I was like, well, like, this is the way to do it, you know, and then committed to it. And then it was definitely wrong. I thought by the time we got to 300 pound bag out there, we'd be less than 10 people. And we had like 30 something people out there at the 300 pound bag. It was crazy. It's crazy what adrenaline can do, you know, like we just like lock in and commit. It's a, uh, it's crazy. And you're, wow, dude, you were doing it. I don't know if you've gone back and looked at it, but you're doing it like a pro. You look like someone who's done it a thousand times. Every time you do it, you grab it sideways, you pull it up onto your lap, you do that spin move, you get it to your shoulder. You seriously look like you had cheated. Like, oh, so Adrian told him a year ago. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I, was, I was definitely really happy with the event. I mean, uh, so you're a bona fide athlete. You went to Google. You fucking looked at this thing two hours before it went in there. The blueprint of of uh, the the I guess the muscle recruitment pattern, the movements you were gonna do, and you just executed on it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think just like committing to like, hey, like this is what we're gonna do. Like, and we ain't looking back. Like, obviously, it was definitely like pretty hard to like go out there and see all the all the athletes kind of doing a different way. Obviously, I think there was probably a couple people that did it my way too. But um, yeah, I mean, it was a. Uh, yeah, just like fully committed. Cause like once you're out there, like you can't really change your game plan, like on something like that. Like I warmed up that way. It's going to be kind of hard to switch it up like mid lift, you know? Um, how much did you talk to uh, Ricky during the entire week? The reason why I ask is it looked really t- in that particular event. It looked really tense between you two, but, but in a good way, like you guys were like, 
like, almost like a fight. Like you were taking yeah. turns punching each other. Yeah. I mean, and I, you guys, and he sat separate from you and you guys didn't even make eye contact when you passed each other. And it was fucking gnarly. Yeah. I mean, it's, uh, I mean, for one, like, like he was the guy in the lead, you know, like we, uh, like I, I think every competitor should have that mindset of like, he has what we want, you know, like, like th th he's the guy that we're shooting for. That's where we all want to be. And he had that, you know, and, uh, I think that was definitely part of it, but like, I think it's pretty ill to think that like everyone knows what happened with him. And I think there's a lot of people that have strong opinions on it. And especially in the heat of competition, like those emotions run strong, you know? And I think that's why I kind of stayed away making any comments or anything about it. Cause in the heat of competition, I mean, like there's a lot of emotions going on. I don't want to be defined by <laughs> my emotions during competition, but uh, yeah, man, it was a, it was a definitely like, there was definitely tension there like throughout the whole weekend. I mean, he, he was re respectful, like never did, never said anything bad in the back about me or, or anybody else that I heard about. But um, just like you think about like, like no one wants steroids or performance enhancing and drugs like in the sport, you know, like I, I, I don't think anybody at the CrossFit Games has taken it and I will stay true to that. And I, and I always felt like I could be able to tell, you know, like if someone's taking steroids, like, like I would just like have that sixth sense. I remember watching the 2017 documentary and him like saying to the camera, like, Hey, like I couldn't look my dad in the eyes and tell him that I cheated. And I'm like, dude, that hits home. Like there's no way I could. Right. Do and then it comes out and it's like, Oh my God. Like I didn't think that he'd be a guy that could do that. Like after saying that. So like for me, like it's a, uh, it, that was like a pretty hard, like emotional check for me. But um, yeah, I mean, I mean, you never know if anybody's taken it. It's not anything I can think about or control. But uh, I, I like to think that, like, no one's taking it in the sport. There's a lot of good people in CrossFit, and I don't think people out there are trying to, like, cheat their way to the top. You could say he brought the best out of you. Yeah, dude. If, if I like mean, just two warriors out there. Like, you may have not lifted that the, the bag you lifted if it wasn't for Ricky, maybe. 100%. I mean, well, I've, I've thought about that a lot. Him and Roman. I mean, you, you look back, I mean, it's, it doesn't really matter. You got to compete with the people that are there. But like a lot of people that were at the games from last year, like I had a good point spread over everybody I competed against before. And with Roman and Ricky there, I mean, it, it I had to work for everything I had. I mean, we kind of separated ourselves from the rest of the field. And man, like every event, like we had to die for points. I mean, at one point, Ricky had a hundred point lead over me, you know? So it was a. Uh, wow. It was wow. a. That's crazy. I didn't know that. What day, was that after day one? I think it was after the Capitol. I, I think I read in a post you made that that sandbag event and, and some people that um, I, I think it was J.R. Taylor. Some of the people that I was talking with while we were watching the events actually said this, too. They said that they thought that that sandbag event was going to just that was the one of all the events that went after the central nervous system of the athletes because you guys were defying what you guys even thought you could do. You guys went like three bags and you guys were just kept somehow getting yourself up to do another bag. And I was like, no, there's no way. It's only a lift. It's probably the capital event. But you actually say in a post, that was the one. That was the um, hard. That, that was, I, I say like, it's the most expensive event. Like I think I've ever done. Yeah. Explain that to me. What happens? Dude, I, I don't even like, I can't explain it. I mean, we've done, so many different, like we've done Fran, you know, we've done echo on Fran and we, we know like going into that event, like we know we're going to be pretty messed up after, but like, we know that feeling, you know, like we know what it feels like to sell your soul on the echo bike or max out a heavy, like clean and jerk or snatch or do something like, that. I don't think any of us have had the experience of lifting a sandbag. It's an awkward lift. There's uh, you're kind of pulled out of position at times and there's an insane amount of time under tension. You know, in the last three or four bags, I mean, I think you can tell for everybody. I mean, it was all max effort lifts. And like you said, we're all kind of surprising ourselves. And I think it was, at least for me, I was kind of in shock because I was like, my body's never felt this before, you know? So like, I was like, I'm scared to wake up tomorrow, you know? Like, I don't know what it's going to feel like. But I mean, to my surprise, like I woke up feeling great, like the next day, like, comparatively you know compared to how i felt after the event to how i woke up the next day i was like oh shoot like okay like i'm good <laughs> get given obviously after the weekend i mean you feel a lot of aches and pains my back took a while to kind of recuperate from the sandbag 
Um, th those are the, and that, I think you summed it up with those two statements, time under tension. Yeah. And there's a video that Andrew just put out. That's pretty cool. That shows that he shows, um, a video, I think it's side by side of you. Maybe it's you or it's Ricky. I can't remember, but also Cole Sager, like for 30 seconds, warring with bags and then being out of position. You're right. Yeah. Everyone's completely out of position. The bags off your midline. It's a fucking train wreck. Yeah. For sure. It's a, uh, yeah, it's, it was definitely like, it was, it was really awesome event like by Boz too. And I think a lot of people were like kind of bummed that it wasn't a heavy barbell, you know, like when it was announced. And then I think it turned into like one of like the most iconic events from this year's games, like from a fan perspective, for sure. I had a lot of people say that this year's games was a lot, like it was really fun to watch. Um, what did you, did, do you have an opinion about the programming? Um, I mean, I mean, my opinion on programming in general is like, like my goal is to be immune to programming, you know, like, yeah, dude. <laughs> hey, dude, I'd rather be compared to that than a freaking monkey. <laughs> it was a healthy monkey. It's a big baboon. Oh, be quiet. <laughs> my ears are all freaking, you said like <laughs> cocked back, freaking looking primal. I'm like, oh, Lord. But yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> anyway, as, as, as long as as long as your mom and dad aren't mad at me. Well, I mean, you might have to talk to them. You know, I mean, you're you're, you're definitely uninvited from the party. Uh, t tell me this: what what going back to Ellie? What do your parents think about um, uh, you you being in this relationship while you're competing? Do they have an opinion on it? Um, I, I they definitely did. You know, I think it was something that like I, I was honestly nervous. To like tell them like obviously my parents are like so supportive of me but they also like help push me you know and like they obviously want like what's best for me and i've sacrificed like a lot to be in the position that i am especially like at my age obviously there's so many people are doing it younger than i was you know like you have all these young guns coming in at 17 it's insane like i can't even imagine like i thought i was really young being able to sacrifice what i did in college to get to where i wanted to be and there's people doing it in high school now which is just Stop Great. it. No one's doing more than you. Stop pretending to be humble. Go on. Tell me. But, You're, what you've done is insane. But and they don't want some girl coming in and screwing it up. Not, not that they don't want your desires getting misplaced. For sure. And I think it's a, uh, I think if you look at it on paper, it looks like it's something that was very rushed. I mean, like we met in April, like for the, for most part. And then we decided that we were going to try to make this work in July, you know? So like, there was not a lot of like time there, but I think we spent a long, like so much time with each other, learned a whole lot like about each other. And like, we were both like, I, I was really nervous going into this year's games. I mean, every year we make a lot of changes and stuff and she was a big factor coming into this year. And I think for us, like we're always trying to push the limit, try to find something new, try to get better. And like my headspace going to this year's games, like I was enjoying training the three weeks going into the games. Whereas last year, like, I was questioning, like, oh, the only, my only, like, driving factor was I was going to have a month off after the games. I was like, dude, after the games, I get a month off. I don't have to go through this anymore. Like, please let this be over, you know? And this year, man, I was having so much more fun. If games got pushed back a month, I'd be like, hell yeah. Like, let's go. Like, I'm in, like, I was having a lot more fun. I just started kind of questioning, like, like, frick, like, is last year, like, what I felt like, that's just what it takes to win. Like, I was scared that since I didn't have that feeling, like, I was not going to oh. You know, I was like having fun, enjoying. I was like PRing stuff and like weeks before the games where I was just like, what is happening? You know, like I just, I was really nervous because last year, like I was at an all time low before the game. So I was, it's something that I was super nervous about, not sure what I was going in. And just that kind of question, like, hey, did I make the wrong call? Did I let it distract me? Like, and, and it was something that I, I you tried. verbalize that. So do you verbalize that or do you have to keep that all in? Like, who would you tell that to even? Like, you I, can't tell it to her, right? No, I, I, I talked to her about it too. I mean, before we even- Like, this sucks. I, I'm fucking having fun before the games. I'm fucked. Yeah, no. <laughs> like, I, I was really scared. I really thought, like, it's a, like, that's what it took to win. And I've always said, like, I train better like, when I'm happy, when I'm having fun. And then it was just weird for that to, like, actually happen, you know? And I was like, hmm- like, this is different, you know? I mean, obviously, I'm not saying I'd never had fun before in training, but it was... No, but I get it. I get uh, it. So, um, 
yeah, man, it was a, it was definitely really a weird feeling going into this year and really enjoyed it a lot more. I think it's kind of different to say, though, like if you kind of look at last year's just the games compared to this year's games, I enjoyed last year's games more than I enjoyed this year's games. You know, I think last year I was just like, holy shit, I am in contention to win. Like, this is insane. Like, after each workout, like, my, my point spreads, like, gaining or I put on the leader's jersey for the first time or all this stuff and I'm like just happy to be there obviously I went into last year wanting to win but like still like I was just like oh my god like this is happening whereas this year the first seven or eight events I was not where I wanted to be I was in the same position as I was last year but I wasn't in the front where I expected where I wanted and what I worked all year to be in and I was just very unhappy on that Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you know? So, uh, yeah, it was, uh, and then like when I actually won this year, it was like, <sighs> did it, you know, like, like box checked, you know, like I, I, that's what I worked to be. Whereas last year I was like, Oh my gosh, that freaking happened. Like it was just, yeah, it was a little bit different feeling. Do you get any comfort knowing that, um, uh, Roman and, uh, and Ricky are like six months away from fucking being put in an old folks home. And you still got, you're only 23, you're 24. <laughs> How old are you? You're 23. 23. Yeah. Yeah. You get any comfort knowing that that like psychological comfort? No, not at all. I mean, I think I look at like Matt, you know, and he was, I think in his prime still, I mean, at 30 years old, I think that's how old he was when he retired. I think he was the fittest he's ever been. So like, and, and then also on the flip side, you look at people like Mal that are 18 and insanely fit. I mean, I think she still has so far to go, but like you have a girl that's 18 and like Matt that's 30. Like there's proof that like, like you can be at the top of your game at any point or from the time you're 18 through your 30, like you can get better every single year. So for me, it's not like once you're at the CrossFit Games, it's an even playing field. Like, I don't really think about age or anything like that. I mean, we're, we all qualified. We all earned our spot. And it's just kind of like a battle from there. Um, I want to talk about Tia and her retirement and how many times she's won. If I, I think that – I mean, it's crazy that you won the CrossFit Games twice, right? To win once is nuts. To win twice, now you're you're starting to get into, like, rarefied air, right? You're in the – like, I'm trying to think who who's done it twice. Matt, Rich, Katrin, Annie, Tia. Mm -hmm. I'm probably forgetting someone. I if, you would have, if you would have beat Matt, I think it would have been like that movie Highlander. You would have, you would have, you would have, but instead of taking his soul, you could think you would have taken his followers. Like, and now you, you have to earn everything you get. You yeah. have to, you have to like, you have to, you have to earn everything you get. When, um, these women, if Tia comes back, they get another shot. I'm guessing you would salivate at the chance to get another shot at Matt, right? Oh, man, I mean, I it, <laughs> like, like, like Matt, come to me, come to me. <laughs> if that stayed, I mean, I if if I happen like finish my cross career, never winning, but like knowing that I had a shot at the best, like the whole time, like I could have like went to bed happy, you know. But like, there's always gonna be that thought in the back of my mind, and like when I'm in training, like that's the guy I'm chasing in my head, you know. Like I'm yeah. not idols, but I like when I like look at a workout and seeing what's possible, like. I'm thinking, okay, how fast would Matt do it, you know? And I think uh, right. that's, like, kind of the things I'm thinking about. I mean, th there's no doubt that he was on a whole nother level than the rest of the field for the last three, four years of his career. I mean, it was insane, you know, what, like, he was able to accomplish. But, uh, yeah, it's uh, – I definitely wish. I mean, it was my, definitely my rookie year. I mean, I went in there wanting to beat him, man. Like, I wanted to beat him so bad. But I think I definitely needed a lot more uh, – experience and a lot more work to be done before I had a shot of doing that. But uh yeah, I definitely wish I was able to compete against him like a couple Yeah, he had a crazy head start on you. Crazy, crazy head start. Um but so it it's gotta be valuable motivation to all of the ladies knowing if Tia comes back, they get one more shot at her, right? I mean yeah. it's I mean especially for people who are at the top like uh, Mal, Laura, the, the people who First, you can first. actually see her at the mountaintop. Yeah. And you saw it, like, I mean, last year, like, even with Laura, I mean, if you watch the games from the games doc from last year, I mean, you could tell, like, 
that's what Laura wanted me to do. Man, she was pumped to get second, but like you wanted that shot to kind of like dethrone her, which I hope everybody has at the CrossFit Games. Like it's a uh, like we're all should be there to win, you know. Um, are you are you going to the Rogue Invitational? Yeah, yeah. Um, do you take it seriously? For sure. I mean, I think like my like number. It's a one lot of goal, money. It's a lot of money. Yeah, my number one goal though is to win next year's CrossFit Games, and I'm going to make every decision possible to like make that happen. And for me, that means taking a month off after the CrossFit Games. You know, like I'm I'm taking that time. If I wanted to like be at my best self for the Rogue Invitational, I probably should have started training already, you know? And it doesn't mean like, hey, like once my, my month's over, like I am in it to win it. I'm giving it everything I have to be prepared as possible for the Rogue Invitational, but um, that's just a stepping stone to get to the CrossFit Games. It's another, it's another chance to compete, um, kind of like hopefully learn some things. Hopefully I get stumped on something during the Rogue Invitational and I have freaking seven months to work on it before I have to be out in the competition floor to show it again. So, uh, it's, it's definitely something like I got a title defend there as well, but, uh, I'm definitely focused on like the CrossFit games, you know, next year. With the month off, what will be, what is something that suffers like, uh, your mile time, your max pull-ups, your clean and jerk, your deadlift. What, what's something with a month off that you would notice? Okay. That that has slipped a little bit. What's one of the first things to go in a CrossFit athlete? Um, it's hard to say. I mean, I think like just like the thing that's hardest for me to get back into it is like, I don't know if you saw my Instagram. Like I did a, I did like a, you don't post a lot on Instagram. I was, I was looked at it very closely last night. I was, no, I'm actually impressed by your Instagram battle for me, man. I, uh, the post on that thing is like, it's almost like a stressor. I, I hate doing it. I can't think of captions. I gotta, um, it's, it's definitely something that's like hard for me that if I had to get better at, like your parents I, should be proud of you that that's hard for you. That's healthy. <laughs> yeah i i probably spend too much time on it but it's definitely something that's just like i don't want to have to deal with this you know but uh i posted that video of me doing a backflip um, yeah 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 phone. yeah that's amazing yeah. what a fucking amazing who filmed that real quick uh ellie dude she doesn't even flinch when you land on your face yeah i know i'm like what the heck come on now yeah uh, like i'm like this is a professional camera person <laughs> most camera people would flinch yeah, I know, freaking not even a flinch. And and sorry, before you tell the story, who did the edit? Me. It's a great edit. Dude, I was I was very happy. I mean, Ellie kind of came up with the idea to like do a like the go wide stretch and then a, an attempt and then a go wide stretch and an attempt. Cause I was just gonna do all my stretching and all my attempts, you know? Yeah. But other than that, I did it. And I freaking love Marvel and I love oldies music. So like that song's from Guardians of the Galaxy, <laughs> volume two, like the intro song. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Okay, so what were you going to say about it? So so you're you're doing this. This is your post. It was hard to do. What Were you going to say something about it? I did four attempts of the backflip and I showed all four of them there. Like that was my last attempt. Dude, I'm still sore from that. Aware. My hip flexors and my adductors are like wrecked. <laughs> from, from from landing or from the explosiveness just being explosive just the explosiveness and like we had a big barbecue yesterday and like we had a slip and slide that was like 200 feet long so like we're sprinting trying to like land on it dude and i'm like my hip flexors and everything are like destroyed from that and like if i was in training like even just daily like i would my body would be fine you know just put like every little thing that i do that requires like some sort of fitness on my body just like is wrecked and then like you just keep training and then that go that it comes back but like that's the hardest thing is you're going to get the volume back in and be able to like bounce back from each training session because when i first start back i mean i can't even come close to the volume i did going into the games and like mm. i'll do one or two workouts and that whole week i'm feeling it so to kind of like get my body back like used to like training I mean, I think every CrossFitter knows that you, you miss a week of the gym and go back. Like you're sore from that first workout, no matter what it is. I mean, at least that's what I think. Cause if not, then there's a lot of people fitter than me. <laughs> when, when you fail that, and, um, is there any party that's not, doesn't, um, doesn't want to show that, Hey, I'm the fittest man alive. I shouldn't show myself fail. No, I mean, uh, I think 
I failed a lot of things, but I think if I post next year of me failing again, I think that's that's more of like the dig, you know? Like I didn't try to work on it and get better at it, you know? I'm totally fine with people seeing that I'm bad at something, but you probably won't see it twice. It's um I think it is the healthiest thing people can do for themselves and their popularity to just lean into their failures. Just fucking lean for- right into it. Yeah. Yeah, like I I like I try to pride myself on being like not necessarily athletic, but like, I want to be like good at everything, you know, like I don't want to go somewhere and see someone do something. And then I'd be like, I can't do that. No, the thing that like has irritated me like recently, you know, like people have the pen and they like, can like turn it. Oh yeah. 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 I'm insane. I can't do that. Like I've been trying to practice it and I'll get it like once every 10 tries, but like, it's just, I bet you Vellner can do it. Oh gosh! I bet you can't do it, you know. And just like little things like that, where like I see people doing it, I'm like, I want to be able to do that, you know. Like sitting there, the backflip, whatever it is, you know. Is your team going back through the CrossFit Journal looking for hints for future tests, Vincent Ramos? Uh not now. <laughs> I mean, we'll, we'll we'll do that a long time in the future, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's just call Jr. Jr. predicted everything. Call Jr. Howell. He predicted everything. Just yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it was definitely really cool to see what Boz did. And I think looking back at CrossFit, I think it's going to be pretty hard to make predictions going forward because um, it's a different person programming. I mean, what are you going to what are you going to learn from Dave's programming to learn more about Boz? At least that's my opinion on it. But uh, yeah. you, do you have Boz's phone number? I don't know. You should I'm befriend not- him and complicate the relationship. <laughs> I, I've honestly had a relationship with Boz since 2017. I did uh, I did the California Regional. Um, I competed there, and then after the competition, I like wanted so badly to have like the banners that they like lean over like the, the edge of the competition floor because uh-huh. like California Regional 2017 is my first year ever qualifying for regionals. Um, so like I was sitting there and I got a hold of Boz and I was like, "Hey man, like I'd love to have like one of those like banners. Do you think I can get one?" And he had no idea who I was. Um, he probably didn't even know I was a competitor. But uh, he, uh, he's like, yeah, man, like, I, I, I got to, like, do a bunch of stuff. But you probably have to wait here for about an hour, and I can, like, get it for you. And I was like, okay. So I sat in the bleachers. I was watching them take down the rig and everything like that. And, like, dude, he stayed true to his word, and he brought it over to me. I mean, you can kind of tell how the top right is, like, a little bit taller than the top left. Yeah, but yeah. He just went over there with scissors and just cut it, like, like eyeballed it right down the middle, you know? And, what a uh, stud. Yeah, so it's a little bit lop, like kind of lopsided, but like and then it was awesome. And then at the next year, same thing. I qualified to regionals again. I tried to get it. He said the same thing, like wait on the side, and uh, he he wasn't able to get it in 2018. But <laughs> I've uh, ever since then, I think Boz has like kind of remembered who I was and uh, stuff like that. Especially this coming from the West Coast. There, in, in a lot of these self help books I read, they talk about already being in the future already that basically you have to feel something before it happens. So I, I, I guess it's like visualizing, but, but feeling wise, it's a, it's a, it's a you, you, you feel something and that begins the creation of it on some quantum level, whatever the fuck that means. Did, did you know 2017? Did, did you already have, um, some championship swagger in you when you look back did you already do you, do you see oh shit i already knew like is there any like i already or do you is it more like the, the opposite would be an insecure little little boy like i spoke to ariel lowen and she said she had no fucking clue she was gonna win the uh the um traversing of the uh parallel bars uh it, um whatever the other movement was i forget what it was what was it was it a clean it was a rock cleans Squat cleans, yeah. yeah. She said she had no idea she was going to win that. No fucking clue. And there she is in between Tia and Laura Horvat, and fucking she put it to him. But, but did, you have an, did you have an inkling that you knew one day, holy fuck, I feel the seeds of a champion in me? Definitely not. I mean, wow. I think uh, in, in wrestling and in football, like I was never like that like top dog, you know? I mean, I was, I was good at what I did, and I put in a lot of work, but like there's always people that are just like naturally better than me, you know? And I just kind of like was like, well, like, 
that's how it is. I'm still going to like work my ass off and try to be the best I could possibly be. But like my first year in wrestling, I probably wrestled frick 50 to 100 matches. Let's just say like, I, I have no idea. And I won in tournaments in tournaments, in tournaments total, like everything. Okay. My first year of wrestling. And I probably won. I, I won one match, you know, holy like, shit. That's it. I mean, I was young. I was in fifth grade, but like I only won one match and I cried after every match that I lost. Like, but it taught me so much. And then like, what did your dad, God, you should ask your dad. I need to ask your dad how that made him feel. That's got to be fucking hard to watch some, your son go 41 and 49 and cry every time. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I like looking back on it, it's nothing that I like, I appreciate at the time, but like, what my parents like did for me is like second to none. But like, anyways, I mean, did but, they make you keep going? Is your dad like, sorry, you got to go. Like, you're like, fuck, can I just stay home and watch fucking Leave it to Beaver? And like, no, got to go to the tournament. My parents have always like, if you're going to do something, like, you're committed and you're going to give it everything you have for, like, for that. So, like, I committed to doing a year of wrestling and I was in it. Like, no matter what that year of wrestling, like, I was doing whether I liked it or not. But it was my choice to come back and do it again the next year. You know, like if I was like, nope, I'm it's done. It's not like losing at tennis either. It's another kid mashing your face. It Dude, sucks. It's, I, I can't explain it to anybody, like unless you've done wrestling or experienced it. That's in high school. <laughs> no one's beating you then, though. You were much better then. Look how yoked you are. <laughs> I don't know about yoked, but uh, yeah, I mean, I think uh, it's a uh, wrestling is definitely very different. I mean, I, I did sports growing up, did soccer, did football, and never had that like that feeling of wanting to like cry after losing like a game or anything like that. But like wrestling, like it just happened, you know, I mean, you're at high school tournaments and kids are still doing it. I was able to control myself a lot more once I got into high school, but like to see that jump I made from fifth grade and seventh grade, I was able to make qualify for the state championship. And I, and I, I didn't do well, but like going from winning one match to like going to the, the, the state tournament is something that's pretty big. And in, in eighth grade, I, did a lot better, you know, and then getting into high school and finishing high school. I mean, I qualified for the state tournament twice, which is really big in California. It's kind of hard to explain if you, if you haven't wrestled in California or no, but um, I had opportunities to wrestle in college and decided not to, but there was always guys that were so much better than me. I mean, it was just, I worked so hard at it, but like kind of was never there. And the same thing was in CrossFit, you know, I think kind of like the weirdest thing is like, I ended up going to the filthy 150. I'm obviously like skipping over a lot of stuff and qualified for my first CrossFit Games, winning the event, and then going to my first CrossFit Games that year and getting. Hurt. And your parents went to Ireland with you? Yeah, and my sisters, my whole family. Your I mean, family's it, crazy. Dude, we literally were just like, you know what? Like, so Adam's like, we're going to do an event every month until we qualify for the CrossFit Games. That was the goal that year. And Ireland was week one. Fucking nuts, dude. Like, we're just going to go for it. You know, every week. Hey, gonna that's go. expensive, too. How the fuck do you afford that? Are you like, oh, fuck, my credit cards are going to be fucked? You know, I, 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 I tell you this time and time again. Like, my family is amazing. And, like, at the time, even then... I didn't really appreciate like what they've done for me. Like they, they never like made me go get a job or anything like that. I mean, I helped around the house. I would work with, like for some friends, parents for the weekend and got paid for that. But like, other than that, I never did anything, but I always gave it a hundred percent when I was doing sports, you know, like, they I rewarded was, you. They knew that. Yeah. They, they rewarded you for your efforts. I, I was, I wasn't slacking off, you know, and I, and, right, and, I right. and, and, but they always supported me in what I wanted to do. And even then, I mean, I was just like, yeah, no, I want to do one like a, 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 every month going in and try to do what I can. And they're just like, heck yeah, like, let's go. And like, never thought about it once, you know, and like now being able to like make some money and kind of learn like what money is like the value of money and like, like how expensive it is to do trips like that. It's, uh, it's, it's insane how they were able to support me through that. And like, I definitely would not have been here if they weren't able to have that support for me because I would have been that kid that went to college, had to go and support myself and go out to get a job and then school. And I probably with my training, like I wouldn't have been able to really train or anything like that. But like they let me be able to like keep pursuing my dream, even though I had no idea. And like, like I said, what I was getting at is like I always worked hard, you know, and then where I, I started working with Adam and I was still this person that went to Wadapalooza. I competed in the elite division, but got 18th. And then six months later, I won my sanctional. And then six months after that, I'm, I'm got third at the CrossFit games. And I'm like, to me, like nothing's changed. Like, it's not like, okay, like now I'm going to start working even harder. You know, like, it's just like, 
kept working for it. And all of a sudden it was just here. I'm like, wait, what happened? Like in my head, I think about the person that got third at the CrossFit games and like, that was so far away from what I pictured of myself, you know? And so like, I, like I, I did not know like that's what I was like capable of, but like, I think after last year's like winning it, like now I am able to like look at that a lot differently. When, when you did that backflip um, and, and you, you post that video, does anyone reach out to you, your mom, your dad, Adam, uh, who's your agent? It's uh, O'Keefe. Uh, uh, it's uh, D- O'Keefe is, is uh, too, but like Daniel, he's the guy that I talk to 24 okay. seven. D- does anyone reach out to you and be like, uh, dude, um, no, yeah. you need a spotter. Did anyone reach out to you and be like, Hey, don't do that again unless you have a spotter. Yeah, I had a lot of people tell me I'm an idiot. That people tell me like, I need, I need to throw my hands. When I do You're that. not an idiot. Anyone who said that to you is an idiot. But did anyone? I'm just saying like the, these are people who are invested in you and like they, they might want to protect their product. I know it sounds superficial, but I don't mean it that way. No, like I mean, my mom is that way. She's like, "Why are you doing that? You're gonna hurt yourself." Like I, I grew up on five acres. I had a dirt bike track out back. I'd always ride my dirt bikes, and my mom like was always so hard on me to like not do that and like. It's hard for me because, like, I want to do everything. I want to go snowboarding. I want to ride my dirt bikes. I want to go, like, do all these things with my friends. But I do sports year-round. Like, it was wrestling into football. I'm not doing that. I'm doing CrossFit. And, um, like, obviously, if you get hurt, like, those sports, like, sacrifice something, you know? And I, I've got hurt plenty of times. I dislocated the shoulder riding my dirt bike, my knee twice in wrestling. And just, like, I've had my fair share of injuries. My mom's always, like a panic, like always thinking I'm going to get hurt and do something and jeopardize. But I think for me, as like, I'm not going to live in a box. Like I want to enjoy my life. I want to do things I want to do. And obviously there's a time and place for everything. Like right now, like I said, like my goal next year is to win the CrossFit games. And if I was two months out with the CrossFit games, I would not be doing a backflip, you know, but like, let's say I land, I like stub my toe or worse comes worse. I like tweak my knee or shoulder. I land on my head. Something happens. Like, I have a whole year until next year CrossFit Games to be ready for it, you know? But, uh, so there's always, like, a time and place. Like, kind of, kind of for me, like, once the first of the year kind of rolls around, I kind of try to square things up pretty good because you're, you're six months away. And if, and if you get hurt before the Open and you're not you're not able to do the Open, like, I can't compete the rest of the year. So I got to make sure that, like, I'm not even hurt going into the Open because that's step one of qualifying for the CrossFit Games. Um, uh, any chance you'll be, uh, Wad Zombie, you'll be making a Justin Medeiros card? Has he talked to you? Um, I don't think so. I haven't heard anything. What's wrong with that guy? (laughs) He's just scared. He must be intimidated by you. I don't know about that. I'm not, I'm not too intimidating. Yes, you are. (laughs) I mean, freaking, yeah, yeah, never mind. You sent me a nice text the other day. You said, okay, let's, I'm coming on to talk to you. And I went, but when I read it, I'm like, this is how I translated in my head. You fucking old midget. I'm coming on to kick your ass. That's how like I translate it. Even though you I, wrote me something that's nice. That's the feeling that I had when I talked to you. Like, oh. I, get off, I, I get off one podcast and I'm like, dude, Stefan's the greatest guy ever. You know? Like, <laughs> guy, and, then, and, then I, and then I go off and then I'm getting called a monkey. I got weird ears. I'm not going to win again. And my girlfriend's going to be the end of me. Let, you know what? Listen, I've never said you're I'm not like, going to win again. You're, no like, one's beating I'm you. Like, this guy, you know, like, and then I go talk to him, like, you know what? I'm going to give it to him. Like, I'm going to, I got this list. I'm going to call him out on his shit. Listen, then- I've never, I may have said a lot of bad things about you. I've ne- no one's beating you, buddy. You are, you are the man. I have, uh, I try to, sometimes I try to throw some barbs at Brian, but man, you're the man leading up to the games. I'm, I know Justin, I, I only hope Colton gets second. <laughs> i know you do what what about um what about uh do, do you watch any jujitsu and, and think you know what fuck i want to do that no i want like, to like like yeah does a party you want to be like I, I like you have to focus this is your sport you're so good at it um but does any party be like man i think i could get in there and mash some of these fuckers that's not that's not really like the, the thought of like, oh, and I want to do jiu-jitsu because I think I'd be really good. It's just something that like seems super like intriguing to me. Like I, I like, I wrestled for so long and like, it just looks like fun. Like I miss rolling around with people, you know? So it's, uh, it's something I definitely like want to get back into, but like the, the, the risk reward's not like in it for me, you know, like I get a bad sparring partner that like, yeah, like, goes a little bit too hard, has an ego. I don't know. Like finds so you out need to, if you, if you, when's the last time you rolled around? When's the last time you wrestled with someone? Man, it's been, 
it's been a while. I mean, I, I've joked around like wrestle with some people like, like kind of in the gym, like just kind of like back and forth, but like strap on like wrestling shoes and wrestle on a mat. Like it's been since high school, probably. You got to find it. That, that actually would be a, I wonder if that, that would actually be a cool thing to see, but you're right. You have to find the right person who knows. Yeah. Like, hey. I, like, I mean, I don't want to like, like if someone finds out that I'm the fittest on earth or whatever it is and like, Oh dude, I'm going to take out the fittest on earth and they get this right. prize go too hard and end up tweaking a knee or something like that. I think that's like, that's the part that scares me. Like, I know I can like, like I've wrestled for a long time. I'm pretty comfortable with it. Like I know I'm going to be like fine, but you, it's hard to like put like my health into someone else's hands, you know? <laughs> what do you, ha have you had a chance to talk to Tia or have you, could you, could you speculate um, for us what's going on? It sounds like just from the way this thing planned out, it sounded like she planned on making this her last year. I'm very similar to Scott Panchik planned on. And then, and then there was a change in mindset, which I wholeheartedly um, approve. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I don't, I hold no grudge against Sean, no grudge against her. Like, fuck you guys. Like, so, so what if you thought she quit or she didn't like, who cares? Yeah. It's her like, shut up. Let's see how this plays out. Yeah. But be, um, do you, do you have any thoughts that insight into what, um, you think maybe maybe because here's what I get a little bit from you that you're looking for that the first year you did really well this year you obviously won but you're looking forward to next year to really be like another you're, you're hungry to put another dominating performance on do you think that that's what happened to her maybe too like she wants to come back because she wants to do one more really dominating performance and she didn't get that this year I mean I don't want to take anything away by the way yeah like what both you did is insane. I'm just trying to understand why she wouldn't just retire. Yeah. I, mean, I don't I, want her to, I don't want her to. Yeah, no, me neither. And I, and I hope she doesn't. I mean, I think uh, if you're the best and you are the best, like you should keep going, you know, but obviously if you're in that position, like you want to walk, you want to walk away on top, you know? So it's, it's kind of like a, a hard balance to find, you know, like you want to, like everyone else like wants to compete against the best, but like how you find out they're not the best as they get beat. But if you're at the top, like you don't want to be like, you want to leave when you're at the top, you know? So like, it's a, it's definitely a battle and stuff, but like, I haven't talked to her at all about any of that. But like, for me, like seeing her family in the front row all week, I was like, Oh, like, I feel like this is like prepared for her to kind of like go. And then we're sitting on the podium and she kind of walked away to the edge. And I'm like, this is it, you know, like we're going to get retirement speech. And she didn't. And I think, I don't know what changed, what it was, but I think uh, I feel like it's kind of hard to walk away when you when you know that you're like fitter and better, better and capable of like doing more. And I think that's just kind of like where she's at. And I think something could have even changed like going into this year's games, like kind of like it did for me. Like maybe last year she wasn't enjoying it like a lot, you know. And something changed this year where she's enjoying training again. She's having fun. She's like, well, if I retired, like I'd probably still be doing kind of the same thing. So like why would I retire? You know, like it's, it's what I love and like want to keep doing it. So I think, uh, I think that's what it is. I think she really enjoys CrossFit and like loves to compete and loves the people, loves the community and kind of like all aspects of it. And it's something that she gets to enjoy. Like, I mean, her, her husband is her coach, you know, like I think they both have that same passion for it and they're going to keep doing what they're doing, whether she's competing on the competition floor or not. So we'll see. I think there's still definitely a shot that she might walk away, but, uh, that's her call, and I'm, I'm. I hope she comes back for sure. Um, uh, when's the last time you've been out to uh, Vermont? And I apologize for the loaded question, the leading um, question. Last time I went to Vermont. Yeah, when's the last time you trained with Matt? And when I mean with Matt, I don't mean like with him specifically, but I mean just with him around. Is it I, that couple last years ago? Last time I went to Vermont was after the Rogue Invitational last year, but I didn't train when i went it was during my week off i went in and mostly just kind of wanted to like talk to him about fitness kind of hang out i might have did like one 20 minute imam or something like that with mal because she was out there at the time just kind of going out to have fun we went to like a pats game and all that stuff but anyways um i think that was the last time maybe like a month after that i, I saw them in salt lake city and still kind of the same thing i was just kind of like getting back into training from the rogue invitational i just finished school and all that stuff but uh yeah that was kind of like the last time i mean the last serious i went there for a training purpose was before last year's games you you train with this guy adam knifer mm -hmm. he's 
in some podunk town on the west coast of the United States. He's been to the games 10 times, still can't fucking, no one knows who he is. You could, why not go train with Matt, put on a free extra 200,000 Instagram followers because you train over there, get in a high profile camp. Um, what's, what about you? Why are you blazing your own trail over here in, in, in middle of nowhere, America, you know, over there? What, why not? And, and I say that because I think a lot of people uh, get, because there is so much movement, a lot of people get ner not nervous, anxious whenever they see people. Like, even if you went over there and trained for the weekend, like, you know what I mean? Like now yeah. it's like, is, is Haley going over there? Was Daniel Brandon going to go over there? Yeah. What was uh, a, a guy went up there? Dallin Pepper went up there. What's Dallin doing up there? And, yeah. and so I'm sure the offer was made to you, right? That you could have done that. Um, I, I, I think I was like, I mean, obviously I, I think I, after winning and stuff like that, like, I think I, I'm, people are very nice and, and would welcome me wherever I wanted to go. Um, and me staying in like Vancouver is not because of anybody else. It's because of Adam, you know, like it's not because everyone else does something wrong, but you're like, not there for the weather. <laughs> no. Or because other people do stuff wrong. I see what you're saying. Okay. But like, uh, it's, I have never been around someone that like, like him and Jesse, you know, like that they want me to succeed. And that is their like sole purpose, you know, is for me to succeed. They don't want anything like in return, you know, like it's a, it's a, it's, it's something that's very unique. And I think you look at um, like just kind of like some of these other training programs, you become like just one of, many you know and like you can um th th their their purpose is to kind of build their brand and obviously in that like i'm not saying they don't care about their athletes i mean they want their athletes to, to succeed and like flourish and in, in, in every which way but like how adam like that there's a lot of opportunity that he could have taken advantage of um from what we've done together you know um with with coaching me he's coached 10 like teams for the crossfit games started working with me my first year I get third two first like he has all the opportunity in the world where he could go anywhere he wanted and coach whoever he wanted but he doesn't do that either you know like he, he doesn't have that desire well said. I see your point right 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 neither, neither does Jesse and I think I, I have that same mindset of like I know that like what we can build is going to be something awesome and I think Adam and Jesse both have that mindset of like they know their value they know like what they're good at and they want to keep getting better but like they're also able to recognize like hey like adam's like i know crossfit like i know endurance like i know how to program for this but like strength is something that like i do like he he, he coaches bergner strength coaches like like adam is very proficient in all aspects of fitness but like he knows that like jesse has more of an expertise in that than he does and Adam's not hesitant whatsoever to bring someone else on the team that has an expertise on that. Like it's, uh, I think it's winning is everything to him. That's yeah. he's there to make you the best possible. He's, yeah. He's, he's here to make me the best possible. And so is Jesse. And like that team that we have, I truly believe is second to none. And I think that's something that makes me very nervous about going into the games is like, I know my team's better than everyone else's. So it's just like, if I don't go out there and, and, and win, like that's on me, you know, like I did something wrong because those guys I know are giving it everything they possibly have to like make sure that I'm the most prepared as I can possibly be. And I think that's something that drives me knowing that they're 100% bought in. And it's the same thing. Like I know they wouldn't be doing it for me if I wasn't bought in the same way. And it like, uh. I owe it, and I owe it to them to give them 100% everything I have, no distractions, all in um, no matter what. So I think it's something that's super special. And like, man, it's, I'm super, super grateful to have them in my corner. Uh, I think we touched on this. Um, what, what did you think of the programming for the games this year? Yeah, like I, I think that the, the program is awesome. I mean, I don't really think about the programming too much. My kind of expectations for the games is to obviously like have a well-rounded test. And I think it's part of the games to see something new, you know, like, like push limit. We should be able to, we should do workouts that you could only do at the CrossFit Games, you know, like mm. that's just super exciting. I think that's what the CrossFit Games are. And I think if those two boxes are checked, like it's going to be an awesome weekend for me, you know? And like I said, like Matt Fraser and stuff is like, like the standard in my, in my eyes, you know, like the open is not meant to find the fittest on earth. 
you know, and same for quarterfinals and same for semifinals. But Matt Frazier, no matter what the programming was, he's going, he's able to go out there and win all of them, like without a doubt. Like, so for me, it's like my goal is to be immune to the programming. Like I want to be able to win the open, win quarterfinals, win semifinals and win the CrossFit games, even though like I'm not training to win the open or win quarterfinals or win semifinals. Like I'm training to win the CrossFit games, but uh, no matter what comes up, I feel like I want to be able to compete at the top. So um, I don't really think about the programming too much or like it's, it's out of my control, but I think, uh, I think I had a lot of fun this year. I was scared that Boz was going to like stay in a box, you know, like it's his first year. I'm going to be super conservative, like do That's what-, what I would have thought too. I thought he would have just played it safe. Me too. And like to go out there and see him just freaking go for it. Like that's yeah. awesome. like I'm super excited for what's to come because I think that's something that was super like that was awesome about Dave is like he's done it for so long that he's like he's not scared to do anything. You know, like right. in 2016, he flew the athletes to the ranch like he's right. like he's willing to go forever and he doesn't care what people think as long as he thinks it's going to be worthwhile test like he's in for it and he's going to make it happen. And it's cool to see Boz kind of have that same feeling of like, hey, you know, like I don't care what people are going to think. Like this is a good test, you know, and, and we're doing it. So I'm, I'm really excited to see like what's to come. Yeah, I was really impressed by his confidence. I, I actually the whole weekend watching and talking to him, I was looking for insecurities because, I mean, you, you, there's there, but he if he had any, he sure as fuck hit him well. Yeah, he, he stayed. Uh, he stayed true, true to his um, belief for sure. How did you get your blue check mark? How did that, how did that, um, did you, did you just on your phone just apply for it? Hi, I'm Justin Medeiros. Can you verify me? Um, I tried for a while after the 2020 games and never got it. And then after winning, like the day after, like literally you just go to like settings and you can mm-hmm. apply for it once you have yeah. like 10,000 followers or something like that. I, mean, yeah. I don't know what the standard was. And I went on one day and it like the, the, like the way you, like apply for it was a little bit different and like you just like you put in your name like like what like i put i was an athlete and then it gives you like uh like references like like is there anybody that like we could reference to like verify who you are yeah. and yeah. i like put i just won so like i was everywhere so i kind of like put the crossfit games and right. i put like a couple other people that i knew i was going to be on and the blue check mark came like within like an hour it was weird but like you can apply like every week is like keep applying. Yeah, I do. I do. Since I lost my blue check mark account, I'm applying with my new account like every week. Well, yeah. So like if you like go to the CrossFit Games next year and win, like you'll probably get it. Oh shit. Well, thank you. Yeah, just like I would that's what I would focus on, you know? <laughs> Asshole. <laughs> what are the chances of that? Hey, um when did you say you went up to Canada to train with Jesse? Do I what? You went up to Canada to train with Jesse. Yeah. Um, and when you see these, I'm I'm curious, what's it like going to Canada? And I ask in this regard, that guy. Do you know who Novak Djokovic is? Yeah. Is that- um, it, that's the tennis player. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. it sounds familiar. Yeah. He's tied. He's he's tied with. There's three guys who are the three best tennis players in the world, and this guy looks like he's going to eventually surpass the other two because he's still playing and he's the youngest. And they didn't let him play. So he could have come to the United States and played in the U.S. Open this year, and they wouldn't let him because he's not vaccinated. <laughs> and they wouldn't let him play in Australia because he's not vaccinated. Um, if, if they move the CrossFit Games out of the country, would you get vaccinated to go do it? I, I definitely would. I'm not going to let something that small, I think, uh, like take away from the opportunities that I want to have. I think it's uh, – my, my problem with it is like – I probably would have took like the vaccination if like, or I mean, I did, but like you, you, you like you gotta, did you need uh, it to go to Canada? Yeah, I think so. Okay. okay. Yeah. But, um, I think it's just like, it's uh pretty, it's just like weird. It says like, it's like parents with their kids. Like you tell them they can't do something they want. They, they like, they're going to do it. If you tell them like, it's just like the opposite. I and mean, you tell them like you have to do something. Like, I think it's, uh, I think that's the only problem with it. Like, it's just weird that like, people say that you have to do something. Like, I feel like I don't have to do anything, you know? I and mean, that's my only like issue with it. The thing you're is every, with it. everyone should have like the choice, you know, but yeah, I mean, everyone so does. You could go to... anywhere in the world. You can go anywhere in the world. Yeah. I think. Do you, do you know which one you got? Did you get, do you know if you got, which brand you got? If you got the Johnson and Johnson, the Moderna or the Pfizer? Dude, I don't remember. I got it a while ago. <laughs> 
Um, wh what about the mullet? How often do you think about just bye bye once a week? Uh, I think about it like a lot. Like I've, uh, I, mean, it sounds weird. I put my hair up into a ponytail and I'm like, Ooh, that feels weird not having anything on my neck. You know, like that's like, it's like, uh, it's I mean, I had a buzz cut like forever. I mean, you showed that picture of me wrestling. That was my hair for a long time. And then I kind of grew it out as a joke and cut it into a mullet and it stuck, you know? But uh, I think like, I, I always like joke around like, hey, like when you know I'm going to be retired and I walk out on the competition floor and it's gone. Oh, shit. Yeah. I think, I think, I think that, that'll be my parting ways with the sport. I'll, I'll walk out for, for my final event with, with, uh, with it gone. Justin is adorable. Do you hear that a lot? <laughs> From my mom. <laughs> uh, and my, did, did, oh, my grandma. <laughs> uh, does, does Ellie, has Ellie made any um, suggestions about your hair or? No, she, she doesn't care. And she never says anything that she loves it or hates it or anything. But uh, she definitely thinks it's like, I put my hair up before like this. And she's like, you look so different. <laughs> like, it's just funny. Like almost everybody that I know, like for a long time, the mullet's still a joke to them because I had a buzz cut my whole life. So people have known me for 10 years without a mullet. So now when I come home, everyone's like, still got that thing, huh? And then it's crazy. Like with Ellie, like she only knows me with a mullet. It's like, yeah. I, like me. And that's same with like most people in the CrossFit area. So it's, it's still funny. Like a lot of people from home, like can't believe you still have that thing. And uh, yeah, I, I, I think of you as just having a mullet too. I don't think of it as a gag haircut. I just think it's your haircut. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's pretty funny. I mean, I, I, I like it a lot. It's, it's, it's like, it's stuck with me. Anyone else possibly being added um, to the group besides you and Ellie? Um, I mean, but we're not, we're, we're not trying to like actively. Yeah. Like actively add anybody else on or anything like that i think uh we're pretty happy with like what we have going you know awesome yeah um uh, before i let you go do, uh, anything you want to um course correct um you want to tell me that you do not look you look like a baboon that you did not grow up in the ghetto that any, any anything i need to be disciplined for i'm good i, th I think you, you, you know i think i think you know i think you learned your lesson <laughs> You're a good dude. You're a good dude. I don't need to be publicly flogged. You have, a, you have a big heart of compassion. You're good. I really appreciate you coming on, dude. Fucking awesome talking to you. Heck yeah, man, dude. Yeah. No, thanks for having me on. Just uh, don't make me have to come back on again, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I know how to summon you. I know exactly what to say. <laughs> I mean, next time I'm going to say you look like one of those little finger monkeys. Yeah. <laughs> you know those ones with the big old eyes? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right, brother. Thank you so much. Uh, give your love to your parents. You're, you're stoked. Uh, tell, tell Ellie that uh, I, I am, I'm, a, I'm a huge fan, please. Oh, yeah. Will do, man. She's, she's out here training. I'm just sitting here kind of waiting for her to be done. Awesome. All right, dude. <laughs> All right. See ya. Bye. Bye. Can you be on, Caleb? Yeah, that's fine. Sorry. I was just handling some stuff. Yeah, handle away. Hey. I think that's the third time I've interviewed him. He's he's like a grown ass man now. I kill. I still cannot believe that he's only what 23, 24? The first time I interviewed him, I felt like I was interviewing like like a thirteen year old. Now he's like fucking man child. Now he's, he's a grown ass man. That's true. Yeah, he's a stud. He's he's very he's very mature, very well spoken. I slept on the floor last night to see if that. I meant to, not, shit. I meant to ask him about beds. Darn it! Darn it! Darn it! Darn it! Darn it! Because he's sponsored bad, huh? by a bed company. Dude, I slept on the floor and my back's better. It's just, I, I, I'm not a soft bed guy. I slept on the floor. I didn't sleep well. I'm going to tell you, I didn't sleep well. But I just threw a blanket on the floor and I slept on a hard-ass floor last night. And I, and I mostly slept on my back because my shoulder would hurt when I slept on my side. Yeah. And my back's 100% better. It's crazy. Soft bed just have fucks you, do, you, do you have like a couch that you can use? No? There, yeah. I mean, this, 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 this house has the... Uh, if I can show you over there, it's got that fat couch. Oh, dude, that's a perfect couch for naps. You think I know N a napping my back never hurts, but it just once I go over the five hour mark, my um, back kills. Yeah, some liver king shit. I guess I am. I guess I'm gonna do that. You should get some get some wood pallets. Yeah, I, some, I think uh, I'm gonna end up doing that. I don't know how my wife's gonna handle that. Um, on a podcast, on a podcast.
All right. Well, that was cool. I didn't. I only expected to talk to him for. Uh, you know, usually when I have someone on for their second, third, fourth time, I start to only plan to talk to them for uh, forty-five minutes. But he's. I feel like he's got some stories just just hanging around. He's waiting, waiting to give them out. Yeah, it's. Uh, it was really. You know, we, we're not. We're not texting buddies. And after I, you know, I, I kept. You know, I was sort of making jokes at his expense. And uh, finally, I get a text. Hey, I'm not. I'm coming on. I was like, oh, that was <laughs> that was easy. He was like sending up the bat signal. I really, really wish I could have gone to his party at his parents' house. I think it was a couple. I was on the 27th. I would have loved that. I'd like to get to know his mom and dad. They seem like dope people. Their whole his yeah. whole family seems awesome. Crazy, crazy. It'll it'll be it'll be fun to see how this. Uh, uh, relationships are a lot of work. It'll be interesting to see how they, how they rock it. You know, people have, when I've made these comments about their relationship, people have been like, well, Shane and, um, you know, uh, Shane and Tia did it and Annie and Frederick did it. And uh, who else? Sam and uh, Fraser did it, but, but she's a super high level athlete. He, he's in. Yeah. That's usually, it's, yeah. Like everybody else, it's got one in one's in and one's out. It's, it's kind of easier that way. I feel like, but. I was not surprised when he said that they don't, they didn't talk to each other the entire time. Oh, you like, mean, you mean during the games? Yeah. Yeah. That would be so, so stressful. What, what, what a, what a weird feeling too, that he was concerned he might not do well. Cause he went into the games feeling great and he wasn't used to that. That's some fucking eye opening shit, right? Last year yeah. he won the games and he went into it the three weeks before <laughs> fucking hating it. This year he went in loving it. Still got the same same outcome. I remember Josh Bridges said that he would not stop training until like two days prior to the games, or like a day prior. Like he said, he was going up basically until the day of because if he felt too good or something, he didn't feel like he was going to perform well enough. But I, I, I that kind of makes sense to me. Yeah, I would. I, you almost just build build some confidence all the way through until you start. You feel Seven. strong all the way through. Uh, Sevon sleeps on pallets of Coke cans. No, that's not true. Uh, Sevon, you can answer my text after the show. What text? Sevon, main, main takeaways. Uh, he's an adult now. He, he's more sophisticated. He's a conversationalist. Before it was just like, uh, that's my, yeah, like I, I, there's people that I'm a little scared to have on the show because I have to fucking carry the whole show. I don't have to do that with him. He can come on anytime and just shoot the shit now. He's a, he's a, he's an adult. I guess, or whatever. He's a conversationalist. If I, uh, I don't have to, he'll just keep going. He's, his brain, whatever happens, it's gone. It's gone to the next level. Speak your mind. Oh my gosh. You actually answered. <laughs> I, did. I need, I need someone to call. I need to make the show eight, eight minutes longer. Or until I have to call, whatever happens first. Yes, speak to me. So I wanted to make a comment on a show that I listened to last week. Is that okay? Please. So I am a nurse practitioner with a weight loss surgeon, mm. but I'm also an avid CrossFitter mm. and I love your show, by the way. Um, I'm down in Georgia where there are a lot of overweight people. And I did just want to say, like, I really enjoyed that. Uh, I think it was Danny was his name. What, that was a great, like, I'm so proud of him. But I did just want to say that I do think that there's a place for weight loss surgery, um, I kind of felt a little bit like it was bashed. Did I hang up? Wait. Oh, I did not hang up on you, by the way. I was stepping away. I was stepping. That is not my fault. That is not <laughs> my not fault. not on the phone. I, yes, you have to I, call I, back. That was, that was not me. I, 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 that, I wonder if I how apropos. Call her back. I call her back. I hope she calls back because that was going to be interesting. Hello. This, I'm going to give you a second chance. If you start, if you start that up again, promoting weight loss surgery, I'm going to hang up on you again. No, no, no! I'm not promoting. No, I'm joking. It. I'm joking. That was a total joke. I didn't okay, hang up on okay. you. I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> that was. I, hey, that was you. I have. I have three bars. That was totally you. Okay, go ahead. Put me in my place. Okay, so I was bashing it. Go on. I'm open to that. Okay, go on. No, 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 no. I'm not saying you were. I'm just saying I actually think that he didn't totally understand. Like he was making a comment about his mom's surgery and that 
you know, she wasn't getting adequate vitamins, all this stuff. Anyway, I just, I basically, I just want people to kind of understand how the surgery works. Okay. So that, um, anyway, so basically when you have a gastric bypass, which is a big weight loss surgery, we just make a small stomach out of your stomach and then we reroute your intestines. So we are purposefully putting you into a state of malabsorption to force you to lose weight. So it works two ways. Malabsorption sounds scary, but go on. Yes, it is very scary. Um, and I'm not going to lie about that. But if you have a good surgeon, they're going to teach you what vitamins to take every day for the rest of your life so that you will be healthy. In saying all that, I want you to understand that I, I want my patients to lose weight on their own if they can. But some people are just so far out there, Savon, that it's like they're 500 pounds. I mean, I'm telling you, it's hard to come come back from that. Um, but I do try to live a lifestyle where I show my patients, hey, you can, it's always nutrition that gets you into shape. And then you can do CrossFit or something like that if, if your body will allow you to do it, um, you know, to stay in shape. So that's really all I wanted to say. Um, I, I just, I appreciate it. I think there's a place wanna, for all of it. I want to propose something to you. Oh gosh. <laughs> There's this in, in the beginning when I was t- talking to people about um, uh, COVID and the vaccine, no, no one dares push back anymore. But in the first year, people w- would push back and they would be like, hey, man, you're you're you're, you're being an asshole. Not at, um, th- we don't have enough time for because I, I would say I would say, um, hey, we have to uh, everyone has to lose weight in order to survive from COVID. The vaccine is not the way out. And they would say stuff like, hey, Sevan, not everyone's going to do that or there's not enough time when this needs to be the band aid to fix it until, and, and, and they would, they would paint, paint this picture that like somehow I, well, who cares what I, about me, but they would paint a picture that that's the compassionate way. And that's to happen. I would argue that every time that that's been done throughout humanity, it's led to a, a worse problem that basically that is a weird, sick psychosis of codependency. That it actually, mm-hmm. it, it, it actually doesn't work like that. Uh, but I hear you. I, I want you to know I hear you loud and clear. Here, here's, here's my concern. concern. Are we, are we going to be worried about the environment or are we going to keep opening up dialysis centers, which are horrible for the environment? We can't do both. Right. Are we going gonna, to, are we going to go ahead? Go ahead, Michelle. I was just going to say, I feel like as humans, uh, sometimes we're kind of stupid because we could prevent so many things just by eating right. And we will not do it. And I will tell you that people will not do it. It's my experience that people will not do it. Sometimes even after this surgery, they will not do it. Right. And nutrition is the way to a healthy lifestyle. And I do agree. Like I, I actually had COVID and didn't even know I had COVID. You know, well, I tested positive for it, but I was never sick with it. I've never been sick with it. I've never quit crossfitting. I've ne- I mean, I just continue to do everything I always did. I still have to wear a mask every day I come into the hospital when I'm rounding or whatever. But um, I'm actually during lunch right now. So. Um, but it's, we're, just, we just, we're just so dumb sometimes. We just will not. We refuse to eat right. I do not understand it. I do not understand it. It's, um, <laughs> it, it is a, it is a, so, so to, to address one of the other things you said, as long as you have a good doctor who tells you how to handle it, I don't know if you heard the show Gary Roberts was on, but his shit is fucking crazy. He fucking no, I don't think lo- so. He fucking lost the weight on his own. Then, and it can be done. I mean, yeah. Then he had he went to a doctor and he said, "Hey, can you cut off my excess skin?" And they said, "Sure." But he didn't do the research, and he didn't realize when they cut off the excess skin, they cut off these fat cells on him. Mm-hmm. And so now his body, when now that he's put back on 60 pounds, his body has nowhere to store that fat, and the only remaining fat cells he has are around his organs. Yeah. So now when he yep. puts on – so now the surgery that was supposed to have make him better – could kill him and then on top of that he did he lost all sensation in his in his body in his torso now 
can't feel his tummy or his titties. And it's like, dude. Yeah, you, you'll, you'll hear that sometimes. Yeah, I've, I've heard that too. And that, that, that. that shit just breaks my heart. You, you, you know, um, uh, Michael Jordan bought his dad a Lexus and it was carjacked and Michael Jordan's dad was killed because he bought his dad a Lexus. Um, you know, Kanye's oh. mom had like liposuction or some shit or got new titties and, and she died in a surgery. <laughs> and it's like, yeah, it's, um, th- there's a, uh, I mean, we, 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 I mean, like, and here's another thing, like you said, I'll let you go in one second, Caleb. Uh, like you said, um, you didn't, you didn't 80, they about COVID about how you didn't get sick from it. From the beginning, they told us 80% of the people were asymptomatic. As soon as you hear that, you know, we're free. Like none of this other stuff yeah. was needed. I mean that 80% asymptomatic. Go ahead, Caleb. Do you, well, I just, is it, do you think it's the fault of the, the doctor or the surgeon for not knowing or not providing the correct information or do you think it's the fault of the patient for not doing the proper research or looking for the right surgeon yes. in general? Yes. Yes. Blaming never stops. So yes, the answer is um, yes. I think it's a responsibility of both yeah. because if you have a good surgeon and an, or an intelligent staff, you know, you should tell your patient what the potential risks are. Now, you know, they sign an informed consent and that informed consent should list every risk. There, and there's a risk with putting your weight back on too, right? You know, I mean, so there's some patient, I mean, there's a lot of patient responsibility with weight loss surgery. Okay. A lot. And some patients, no matter what you give them, they're never going to read it, you know? Um, and then you have these patients that, you know, they do everything right and they, everything turns out great and, you know, they're doing great. And I mean, there's just something to be said for this happy medicine that where people's lives turn out better. But I just think that there's a place for both. I'm not pushing it on you, Savon, at all. I just want you to understand that sometimes if you weigh 500 pounds, I mean, I'm going to tell you, I don't know if I could come around from that. I weigh 124 pounds. And, you know, I struggle with, you know, thinking about my weight. I'm 55. So I grew up in a generation where we worried about the scale. But, um, you know, I CrossFit six days a week. So I'm in pretty good shape for. What gym do you cross for that? at CrossFit Carnivore, and I want to tell you, I want you to call them so badly and talk to, to our owner because she's a nurse practitioner like me, oh, oh. and she she just lives it, man. I mean, oh. she's just – She sounds great. Got, she sounds, she she's sounds amazing. Like she's, she sounds like she's got a full perspective too. Like I need people like that who can kind of like slap me around and be like, hey, dude, you don't get it. Yeah, she's a badass. I mean, she's about 20 years younger than me. She's a badass, but – um, She owns the gym anyway. and she's a nurse, huh? That's hardcore. A nurse practitioner, like she, she works with dialysis patients. Actually, <laughs> you were just mentioning, Ooh. yeah. So she knows. Um, but anyway, that's all I called to tell you. And hey, from Georgia. <laughs> hey, you're awesome. I appreciate it. You're awesome. <laughs> all right, you have a great day, sir. All right, bye. And bye. Oh, the power of a voice! What an amazing voice that lady had, huh? She just like subdued me. That that southern voice is is always so sweet. She subdued me. Uh, Justin Woy, Woy's, Woy's. Yep, I'm down 180 pounds, but the real change didn't happen until I adjusted my mindset on food. It's a war, man. You, here's the thing. Uh, it, it's, it's almost like it should say it. Um, it's like cigarette smoking, right? Like, uh, I'll, I'll, like yesterday, I was walking around on the beach, and I was like, man, I sure could go for a chew right now. And it, it, never, it never goes away. And it should almost say on the side of the Coke can, if you drink this every day, eventually you will have so much loose skin that you'll never be able to lose it. I mean, it's like it's it's like that. Uh, you know, if you eat if you eat McDonald's, if you eat here more than um, if you eat more than six thousand calories here a day, eventually your body will be destroyed. And you'll, no matter what discipline you have, you'll be haunted by wanting to eat here your whole life because our food's so fucking good. <laughs> I mean, it's like they sold a billion for a reason. That's always the weird part for me when people are like, "I hate smoking." Like they used to be smokers. I'm like, "What? Are you kidding me?" Or like I, a, a fucking hamburger, a Jack in the Box, ketchup, mustard, and pickle, cheeseburger. Double patty? Oh. That sweet bread? Oh. Please. Oh. oh. I wonder you sold a billion. My dad used to work at Jack in the Box, and so we would always drive by, and he's like, he just loves Jack in the Box. Oh. Hey, one of the only times I – well, I shouldn't say one of the only times. One of the handful of times I shit my pants um, was <laughs> I was uh, – I ate a uh, – something from Jack in the box. And I was, I was living in my car at the time and I was sleeping was in the back there tacos or something. No, it was like, a, uh, it was something, a, not a breakfast Jack. It was some hamburger that had Jack in the name Jack in it. It was like, Oh yeah. And, um, 
and I went to bed and I woke up like at five and I'm like, oh shit, I got to take a shit. And I fucking drove to the, a McDonald's, ironically, and I fucking jumped out of the car to run inside and the, it just splattered into my pants. Oh I had, my and in the parking lot right there, I just lowered my pants and underwear and just left them and stepped out <laughs> just, <laughs> and drove away. I was probably like, <laughs> 25. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, Sour Jack, Sourdough Jack. Yes, I think that, what is it? I think that was it. Yes. Yes. That's so bad. All right. Um, well, great show. Justin Medeiros, uh, the king. Medeiros. I think what he meant to say is, Sevan, I came on here to thank you for being the only guy who says my name right. Justin Medeiros. I think Chase claims that he says it right, too. Um, say it again. One of the few, for sure. Yes. All right, guys. Uh, I don't know what we. Oh, is tomorrow we have Nikki Rod on? Is I think tomorrow? So. Yeah, tomorrow's Nikki Rod. Tomorrow morning Nikki we have Rod Nikki Rodriguez Alex on, Stein. and Alex Stein. And then, and then after that we have Alex Stein. So Nikki Rodriguez is the uh, co-founder of B Team in Austin. He's been on the show two or three times. He's getting ready to go to the hardest jujitsu tournament in the world, which I think is in Las Vegas this year. Which is weird because I think it's called the. ADCC, which is supposed to be the Abu Dhabi something champ. Comp oh yeah, yeah, combat championship. I and mean, I'm not sure why it's in Vegas, but but that's cool. And then we'll talk to him. Um, and uh, man, he's been training with so many fucking famous fighters. They, they go out of their way to find him. And then uh, we have Alex Stein on at 8 a.m. Uh, he is exploding. He got the uh, the. The job with Blaze TV, and he recently schooled Dave Portnoy over at Barstool Sports, and fucking, it's kind of crazy. Love and then, in the, and then the evening at 7 p.m., we have uh, Jorge Ventura, uh, one of America's greatest uh, journalists, reporters, like a real journalist, not like us goofballs in the CrossFit space. Real media, yeah, real media. All right, guys, thanks everyone for checking in. Love you guys.